Hi, I'm Bob Monkill, and you're watching Newcastle Fans TV. Hello everybody, welcome back to the series where we're looking at uh, everybody's positions uh, on the whiteboard and we're just basically running you through uh, what we think of each individual position player-wise and so on. So Newcastle are back in training from Monday, if you're watching this on Monday the lads are back in training this morning. So we are expecting to see a lot of transfer activity starting to happen, players are leaving. And because pres presumably you will probably might say the likes of say Henri Savé or Emmanuel Rivier training with the reserves. I'm sure we'll find out the next day or two. But let's talk about Matt Ritchie first. Now, we're going to be doing the right wingers, and the reason why we've only got Matt Ritchie there is because, remember, we're not covering any of the under-23 players. We're just covering the first team, so we've only naturally got one right winger. Yes, you're going to say Goo Frank can play across there, Atsu can can, but naturally, we've only got one right winger. So, we're going to begin with Matt Ritchie, who plays in this position. We've talked about Matt Ritchie several times on doing these whiteboard previews before matches. So, Matt Ritchie... Um, I mean, what can I say about him? 16, 17 goals last season. I expect Matt Ritchie to get double figures again, at least 10 goals this season. That's what my aim for him. We know, especially going away from home and where we're against the counter, Matt Ritchie will come back and help DeAndre Yedlin out in that position. We know that he works really hard. And also, he can also play on this position as well, going backwards as well. So because he's naturally left footed, he can play either side. If he plays on the right wing, we know that he comes inbound and likes and that will allow the likes of Yedlin to overlap so that's the strength that we've got on this side we don't not, we don't see him tend to cut in as much I know he scored that great goal against Burton when he cut in with his right foot but realistically how many times have you seen that this season so we know that Matt Ritchie can play on both sides and it's a threat I think but I do feel to be honest with you is, I think he needs competition. We can't just rely on Matt Ritchie because if Matt Ritchie knows that he's playing every week, what if his form dips? What if he has a dip of form and we've got no way to cover on the right wing? So even if it's a young star, I know we've been linked to the likes of Shea or Ojo from Liverpool who can play on both sides, but I feel he needs competition and that's not because of him. I think it's beneficial for the team rotation as well. Yes, you can ask the likes of Atsu and, you know, Gufran and maybe Yasin Belamani might come through the ranks, you know, but realistically this guy needs challenge but what a player he is 100 percent have to keep him next season let's get over to our uh, second striker roles so let's begin with Ayose Perez who actually ended up our third top scorers in double figures last season um so Perez plays in this position now <sighs> He's kind of 50-50 with a lot of fans and he is with me as well. Now, I generally thought that once we got relegated from the Premier League, we went down to the Championship. I actually thought he would become a star, him and Mitrovic. And yes, I know he's got double figures, but massive times. I think the last two months, he had an outstanding last couple of months. But during the, during this season, along with the army, frustrated the living hell out of me. He really did. So, Perez, we'll come at the army in a moment. But, but when Perez gets the ball in this position... He likes to fanny around, he likes to do flicks and come over at this position and fanny around. I didn't like that. I think what he needs to do is man up. I think he needs to work on his physique. Um, I think he's in spells, he's got some great touches and he can do a little bit of magic. That's fine by me. I think also what you can do with Ayose Perez as well, he's not restricted to that position. We've seen him play here a couple of times, filling in for other players during last season as well. So he does give you options if you've got a bit of a crisis, as I've mentioned with Matt Ritchie there. Matt Ritchie doesn't have a natural um, competitor in his position, so Ritchie could, I mean, Perez could do a job. Can, can Ayose Perez play in that role? It's... We haven't seen enough of it. Maybe you can do. Maybe, like I said, if Gale's not around, maybe Perez can play up top. But for me, when Newcastle against against it, for me, when Newcastle against it, I was Perez as a ghost. You just didn't see him. I think that's why, especially away from home, Rafa goes for Diarmi more. Because when we're under the cosh and we're trying to get the ball out against the counter, at times, yes, we look fabulous. But at times when it doesn't work, we just haven't got that player in that number 10 role, Perez just goes missing for literally about 70, 80 minutes of the game. And he just didn't see him at times. It's something that he needs to work on. He needs to come back into this position, help out and get the team further afield. Because remember, we're going to be up against the big side. There's no doubt that we'll, we'll play the counter system. We've got no, no qualms about that. Let's get over to Mo, Mo Diarmi. Right then, so Mo Diarmi, very similar to Perez. It's like, 
he's hit and miss and more times than not last season and he admitted himself that he was a miss more times than not so again Mo Diomi uh, plays in this position now away from home I think he's a hell of a lot better than Iose Perez because when we're trying to get the ball out there's no doubt that Mo Diomi drops into these kind of positions when Newcastle don't have the ball which Iose Perez doesn't do so try to get out when we've got the ball to try and spin it out to the wingers to get on against the counter or over the top to Gale Perez doesn't offer that whereas Mo Diomi does now we've seen also um, again towards the back end of the season Mo Diomi playing in these two positions because we're, we're sort of with Isaac Hayden's injury and it gives you the option of Mo Diomi getting forward I personally think Mo Diomi is so much better in these two roles because he's got that drive. He's got he's better on the ball than some other our, our defence midfielders likes of Callback and Hayden. I think Diomi is much better on the ball and it gives you that driving force. It's something that we could use next season for me. But it's his consistency. I mean, the Birmingham game, without which I have that was his best game all season. I know he scored against Wigan, you know, um, but that game against Birmingham, he was like a man possessed when we won 4 0 at home. It's, it's, it's like, why can't we say enough of it? The consistency for me, you kind of play it up top. You just can't. He's just. <sighs> people call him lazy, and I can see why, or people call him the, the, the poor version of Musa Sissoko and all of that, which is a little harsh on him because you don't see him sprinting much because you see him trot. Um, but for me, Mo Diom in the number 10, I'm really, really worried if Deep Ratfra goes for that option. I just don't think Mo Diom is the number 10. If we are going to keep Mo Diom and he doesn't get sold, put him as a centre midfielder, even if it means that he's fourth or fifth choice for me. Right, and so Sim De Jong. Now, the reason why I'm putting Sim De Jong is because he's mentioned that he wants to have a future at Newcastle, and I think Rafa will look at him. Now, when we're done the centre midfield videos, I didn't put Henri Savé in because I just don't feel Henri Savé will be a part of the Premier League season. I do honestly think Rafa will get rid of him, and he slated the club off when he went to St Etienne. So, Sim De Jong is, he's, again, he's one of the, like, the other two, and he's like, oh, he's, he disappoints you, then you'll have a little bit of spell. Now, Sim De Jong's got no pace. The other two have got a lot more pace than what the other what uh, De Jong has. So I think Sim De Jong is going to be quite static. I think Sim De Jong, you will normally find him in this position. You'll not run out. You'll not do none of that. And you'll not spin out to the wing like Perez does. So Sim De Jong is quite static. So when you've got a, a crowded... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you've got a congested area, you probably want De Jong and Perez in that position because they're great with their feet. Now, he has played here a couple of times. I remember when against Aston Villa, when we drew one one, he missed that dreadful sitter with the header. I don't think he's a number. I don't think he's a striker. Now, don't get me wrong. He has done a lot better in the Eredivisie uh, when he went out and he scored six, seven goals in about twenty five games. Fair enough. But for me, De Jong, I just don't know with him because in the Premier League, I think you need pace. And I just don't feel that Sim De Jong's got that to run. I know, you know, you're having your number 10, some on, some number 10 don't have great pace. But for me, Premier League, I think you need it. And maybe you can play a striker, then your number 10 just off him, perhaps. Maybe you could do that with De Jong. I am struggling what what we're going to say with De Jong, because yes, he's great with his feet. Now, but I do think he'll give you better consistency than what the other two will. I generally think De Jong will be more consistent it's just he needs to stay away from injuries and he needs to start getting some goals if he is going to is going to stay pre-season is massive for this man i think pre-season is more for him than the other two definitely i know diom is uh, he was it wasn't great but for me sim de Jong, the pre-season all de determines whether he keeps him rafa keeps him not i think he, he does want to stay but uh, i'm struggling with sim de Jong. i really am let me know what you think of course and your thoughts and your comments down there below and we'll see you later